Hey guys, it's Tyler here for bleepinjeep.com. I've gotten a ton of requests for some YJ videos. So this week I am going to introduce you to my YJ. Bleepin' Jeep fans, this is Sugar. Sugar, this is Bleepin' Jeep fans. So this was really the the first vehicle I ever owned first vehicle that was really truly mine and uh, I had no idea what I was doing I bought it in uh, 1998 uh, I was going off to college and I wanted something that I could carry passengers the stupid thing is is when I bought it it didn't have a back seat <laughs> that didn't make much sense. I'm not going to lie to you, it was a mall crawler. It had 31 inch BF Goodrich all terrains, had a 3 inch Pro Comp lift that was just dreadful. It had all kinds of chrome on it, it had chrome nerf bars and it had chrome tube bumpers front and rear. It, it looked like somebody had just had a J.C. Whitney catalog orgasm all over this thing. Chrome everywhere. Everything chrome. There were all kinds of things wrong with it. I had no idea what I was doing when I bought it. I'd never bought a car before. Never even had a, a four-wheel drive before. My friends in high school all had them. But I'd never owned one. Didn't know any of the things to look for or you know what to watch out for, but I just knew that my buddy had had a CJ7 and we'd had all kinds of fun in that thing in high school. Deer hunting and taking girls out in the hills and screwing around and well, not that kind of screwing around. Just knew we'd have a great time in that Jeep. <clears throat> so I decided that's what I wanted was a Jeep. Where my springs mounted the frame were cracked. It had a blown motor, been overheated and burned the rings out of it. But I didn't know to look for blow by when I was a kid. You know, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't know what to look, to look for that kind of stuff. It started up and I drove it away, but it, it, in, the, in the two hours it took me to drive it home, I had to put a quart of oil in it. That, uh, that's what really started my adventure into, into owning a Jeep. It got real expensive to own real fast. <laughs> And pretty soon I figured out that I was going to have to start learning how to fix the thing about myself or I just was not, I just couldn't afford to fix the thing, uh, to pay people to fix it. So I guess I ought to thank this thing because it really, out of sheer economic necessity, forced me to learn how to fix vehicles. And you know what? Let's get out and do a walk around. This is a good spot. So I guess the front's is as good a place as any to start. I'm running a Dana 30 high pinion front axle with an aux locker and I actually bought this, I bought that whole front axle off eBay. And it came with the locker. It already had the one piece axle conversion. This had a Pro Comp 3 inch lift on it when I bought it, and it was just awful. Um, no flex in it at all. It just made your kidneys bleed every time you, you hit any kind of a bump, it knocked the teeth out of your head. It was awful. This Rubicon Express lift, and I bought it way used. And it's it's really good ride. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a good a good upgrade and it was it was pretty cheap so I'm running sway bar disconnects and uh, they were on it when I bought it they're not real great but they do the job you can see the aftermarket axle seal that uh, the previous owner the guy I bought the axle from installed those up front I'm running a, a, a bumper that I fabricated out of uh, it's just a two by four piece of tubing of, of tube steel that I trimmed the ends down, welded them closed, and, and 
mounted it up under my winch plate. This came on the Jeep. It was originally designed to, to flat tow with it. I left it on because I I didn't weld any kind of uh, of recovery hardware on the on this front bumper. So for now, I've left them left them on there because I can put a a shackle or a clevis in there pretty easy and and winch pull myself out. This actually connects to the the cross member in the frame, so it's pretty solid. Kind of kind of ruins my approach angle though, so this needs to go eventually. Running a Ramsey Platinum 9000 winch with 150 feet of cable. I bought it used from a guy when I was in college. Uh, it was probably the first upgrade or mod that I did. I paid, I don't know, 450 bucks for it or something. Still in the box. <clears throat> the guy really had never installed it. It had just been sitting in his garage for a while. It's saved my bacon many, many times. It's been a good winch. I've got 33 1050 BF Goodrich tires on 15 by 7 inch steel wheels, American Racing steel wheels. These came on the Jeep when I bought it. They were chrome. I've since painted them black because I just don't like chrome. Plan on upgrading to, to 35 1250s very soon. Got extended brake lines in the front. I, uh, and you'll see I've got it tied back out of the way. The factory brake lines that were on it rubbed against the tire and I did, didn't catch it and I blew a brake line one day and almost remodeled the front of a shopping center. I was able to get it stopped, thankfully. And then I was stranded in a little tiny podunk town for two days while I waited for parts to come. I mentioned that I've got the one-piece axle conversion. It also has a Dana 44 sized front U-joints. And if you look right here, this is a little trick you can do. Maybe I'll do a how-to video on this. But you'll notice a little tiny spot weld on the cap of that U-joint. And that just keeps the, uh, the cap from, from backing out. The only U-joint failures I've ever had are because of the caps backing out of the, of the ears on the axle. And the problem with that is when that happens, you can, if you don't catch it immediately, it destroys the ears of the axle and, and an otherwise viable axle is then junk because of a stupid U-bolt cap that, that came off, or U-joint cap that came off. So that's a little trick that you can do. You've got to be real careful you don't get it too hot and boil all of the of the grease out of the U-joint, <clears throat> but it's just a, a quick little trick you can do that keeps those caps from from coming out while you're off-roading. Here we've got my homebrew rock sliders in rocker guards. And there's It's a piece of uh, 3 16 inch steel that I traded some work with a welding shop to have them bend and cut these. And they go back in, this steel plate goes all the way back in and connects with the body mount here on the frame. And then I welded these, this C-channel on later as a to give me a little bit more standoff and a place to, to have a footrest. These work really great. <clears throat> Problem is they're like a million pounds <laughs> between the two of them. I, th I think they weigh close to a hundred pounds a piece, which in a, in a four cylinder, that kind of weight really makes a difference. So these really, they work really good, but they're just too heavy. I need to probably do something different here. I did the the TJ flare conversion on these. So these are flares off of a TJ and I cut the openings to make them bigger so that I could clear a little bit bigger tires. <clears throat> these, uh, these make it so that I can fit 35s. They really make a difference on the rear. So these TJ flares really open up the wheel well quite a bit, especially back here. You gain, uh, I don't know, it's like three inches or something of clearance back here which allows you to put quite a bit bigger tires without adding more lift. I don't, I don't like tons of lift. I like to keep my vehicles as low as possible. I'm running these boomerang, boomerang shackles front and rear. I bought them off of eBay. I think I got all four corners for 30 bucks. Some kid was cutting them out on a laser cutter. They've worked pretty good. I 
had a clearance problem with the factory shackles. This uh, leaf spring was coming up and just smacking into this bumper. So these boomerang shackles have given me just a little bit more clearance. Gives that, that leaf somewhere to go, not smack into my, my bumper anymore. I've got a custom built rear bumper and swing out tire carrier. I traded some upholstery work to that same welding shop to build this for me. And when I built the front bumper, I used the same proportions and just shrunk it down so that my front bumper would match this. They did a pretty good job. It's welded right to the rear cross member of the frame. They, they beefed up the rear cross member with a C-channel, button welded it, and then this is welded to that. They did a pretty good job. It's been a good bumper for me. Uh, my only, only thing I wish I would have done different was had them do this, this uh, receiver hitch flush so that it wouldn't screw up my departure angle so much. But hindsight's 2020. I've just got a piece of uh, military surplus webbing on here, and all, all that is is to quiet these down. These ring and bang like the mill tells a hell when I'm going on the trail if I don't have those on there. So I quieted those down a little bit. Really good anchor points. Got it wired so that I can pull a, pull a trailer. And uh, they did a real good job. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm running a Ford 9 inch rear end. It's got the heavy duty housing and a Curry center section. With the Daytona pinion support running 31 spline axles. I've got, it's the Ford big bearing housing on the ends and then I've got a Ford disc brake. I've got Ford disc brakes on the back. Really, really happy with that axle. That's, that's such a great axle. And even with 35 inch tires, I'll, I'll never break it. Uh, those 31 spline Fords, especially with alloy axles, will easily handle 37 inch tires, so. My goal in building this was I just didn't want crap to break, and that thing's never going to break. <laughs> Got a Detroit Eaton True Track limited slip in the back. Love that thing. So I'm running a, a super short Rugged Ridge Slip Yoke Eliminator kit. I've been pretty happy with that. So I'm sporting a, a Tom Woods drive shaft. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my shaft is a woody. And that sucker came, I called him at 3, about 3.30 in the afternoon, and it showed up two days later. So very impressed with those guys. Um, and that's been a good drive shaft. I, I custom built these spring plates because I was, I knew I was gonna stay spring under and uh, I didn't want I didn't want to drag or snag my U-bolts on rocks as I was going over rocks, so I built these with these slide rails on them, and that just that just keeps the rocks off those U-bolts, keeps me from hanging up, and keeps from destroying my U-bolts. They've uh, they're they're a quarter-inch steel, and I just cut them out, welded them up. Not super high tech, but they work pretty good. Moving to the interior, there's not a whole lot to see here. I've these are old custom upholstery seat covers that I did way back, I think in 99. And they've held up pretty good. It was sort of an experiment. I used what's called Sombrella, which is a marine canvas. It's what bimini tops and most of your boat covers are made out of. I figured because it was so UV resistant, I would try it out as a seat material. And then this is Thousand Denier Cordura pack cloth like uh, your military backpacks are made out of. And it's nylon, so it's faded quite a bit. But I'm pretty, pretty impressed with how they've held up over the years. I mean, that's they certainly have been treated poorly, and they've held up pretty good. My driver's side seat's finally starting to come apart, so it's time to redo them. But, but that old marine canvas held up pretty good. It was really hard to work with because it's so stiff. It doesn't stretch at all. But... It's held up okay. I don't run I don't run carpet in this Jeep. I tore it out a long time ago. It just it just started to, to
to cause problems with mud and trying to keep things clean and so I, I tore the carpet out this is a, a bed liner that you can get in a spray can at Walmart and I think I did this years ago probably in either 99 or 2000 so you know 15 16 years ago it's really held up pretty well considering it came out of a spray can but it's this used to all be red in here this way I, I, I leave the drain plugs out if I get mud or dirt or whatever in here I just hose it out I've got a full roll cage the uh, same guys that built my rear bumper and the and bent these rock sliders for me put in this uh, this cage for me I did a couple I reupholstered a couple of their welding truck seats on trade that's one thing you guys you know if if you're like me you're on a tight budget if you've got a marketable skill there's a lot of people out there that will do trade work for you this is a it's actual tubing it's not pipe pipe is for poop <laughs> but it's a pretty good roll cage they're my super cool Gant mag steering wheel <laughs> what happened with this is when I redid these seats I added about two inches of padding to them and my legs wouldn't fit under the stock steering wheel so I had to get a smaller steering wheel and I I really actually like this steering wheel quite a bit my kids have broke the horn but but I like the size of it I like uh, I like the thickness of it I've been pretty happy with it well there you have it I uh, I did pretty much all of the mods on this long before I ever got involved with bleeping jeeps so I don't really have videos of any of them but this project is not done uh, there are some things that I do want to change some things I still want to upgrade so stay tuned there'll be some YJ videos coming I hope this will help some of you YJ guys satisfy your appetite for a minute or two as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support of the channel, and I will see you next week.